Good morning. Welcome to worship, whether you are here with us in person or worshiping with us at home. I'm glad that you have chosen to worship together with us this morning. In the way of announcements, I will begin with a very special invitation for the Eagle Court of Honor. You are cordially invited to the advancement ceremony to award Eli Mangan the rank of Eagle Scout. This is next Sunday, May 2nd, 2021, 4 p.m., here at the church. I hope that uh, you will consider coming out to support him on this very prestigious achievement. Um, also, uh, following worship this morning, we will have our monthly church conference, so I hope that you will uh, hang around for that. Uh, next weekend as well is the Habitat for Humanity uh, 5K and Health Walk. If you would like to participate, uh, see Deborah. Um, between uh, now and then, probably as soon as possible. Uh, <laughs> uh, but let her know if you would like to uh, participate in that. Uh, we have made some slight revisions to our, our COVID uh, procedures. Uh, those are outlined there in your bulletin if you want to look over those, uh, if you haven't had a chance to do that already. And, of course, remember that we continue to collect items for the local animal shelter as well. But again, I'm glad that you are worshiping with us this morning. Let us begin our worship together. Our opening hymn this morning is one we are all familiar with. Please stand as we sing together, "'Tis So Sweet to Trust in Jesus." Thank you. 
who want to come forward? No. Okay. I'll do it from here then. Um, but y'all can still participate from right where you're at. And I actually, I need your help this morning because I've got some quotes I'm going to read. And I want to see if, especially our kids, but adults too, if you know who said some of these. To infinity and beyond. Good job. Some people are worth melting for. There you go. The frozen snowman Olaf. Just keep swimming. Just keep swimming. You good job. Me want cookie. Cookie monster. Pretty easy, right? If, if it's a beloved character or a movie that we've seen hundreds of times in the cases of Frozen at our house, um, we pretty much can easily identify quotes and lines and even voices when we hear them. They become instantly recognizable to us. The more we see the movie, the more time we spend with the character, the better we know their voice. I'll give you one more. Love each other as I have loved you. Jesus, good job. And of course, Jesus isn't a cartoon character. Scripture tells us, as we will see today, that Jesus is the good shepherd who takes care of us and shows us the way to live. And Jesus says that in being the good shepherd, all of his sheep, us, will know his voice. We will know his teachings. And we will listen to him and follow him on the path that he leads. Jesus' voice and words should be just as well known to us as any other that are important to us. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for speaking to us through your word and in our hearts. Lord Jesus, may we hear your voice and know it. May we recognize your teaching and what you call us to do. And may we let you lead the way in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Another familiar and favorite hymn. Please stand as we sing our offertory hymn, Trust and Obey.
As we gather in your name this morning, we give you thanks and we praise your greatness. We pray that your spirit will fill our hearts and guide our every thought and action as we strive to be more like you. As we come humbly before you this morning, confessing our sins, we are so grateful that you have assured us of your forgiveness, that even though we fail you, you have never turned your back on us. We know that everything we need is found in you, Lord, and all we have came from you. And now we ask that you receive our offering and multiply it to your glory and in your service for the growth of your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please stand for the doc song. <laughs> First scripture reading this morning is Psalm 23 and will be followed by our gospel reading from John chapter 10 verses 11 through 18. Psalm 23, a psalm of David. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his namesake. Even though I walk through the darkest valley, 
I fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. And from John's Gospel. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because the hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own. And my own know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they too will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me. Because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father.
there's a phrase that I have recently kind of latched onto, and it's just keep stepping. I first come across this uh, phrase when it was uh, mentioned by um, a wrestler, Dustin Rhodes, son of Dusty Rhodes, whom I'm sure most of you, even if you don't or have never watched wrestling, you know who he was. But Dustin, in an interview, said, just keep stepping became my motto after some advice from my father. I'd struggled with alcoholism and drug abuse, and I finally broke down and went to rehab. And I did my time, and I came out, and I enrolled myself in a STEP program. And working my program meant I needed to follow the steps. And my dad would call me every day before he died, and one of the things he would always say to me was, Son, are you stepping today? Just keep stepping. Keep stepping and stick with it. And he went on to talk about how this mindset became not just his mentality for overcoming his addiction issues, but his whole approach to life. And as I read this week's uh, lectionary text, that mindset of just keep stepping kept popping into my mind in all of the text. And I think it's because throughout this Easter season, we've been talking about life after resurrection and what it means to live faithfully in light of Jesus' life, death, and, of course, resurrection. What is it that we do now? What is it that we do following this miraculous event? How is it that we live in light of resurrection? We just keep stepping. No matter what comes our way, we just keep stepping. In David's famous psalm that we read, God's care is shepherd, as shepherd is celebrated. In John's gospel, we hear Jesus proclaim himself as the good shepherd who cares for the sheep with commitment and courage and calls out to them and leads them, who essentially tells them, just keep stepping. Even when the wolf comes, I will lead you. Just keep following me. We often think of resurrection as something that will happen to us after we die, but resurrection is mu as much about how we live our life right now as it is about what will happen in eternity. Resurrection is the thing that helps us keep stepping in this life. It is the hope of resurrection that makes living faithfully possible it is the thing that gives us the strength and the courage to risk living and loving and serving and following, even when it hurts. Let's look first at Psalm 23. I imagine we all know and love this psalm very much. This image of a tender, loving, caring shepherd. It's an image that likely has brought each of us comfort in a dark hour in our life or in a time of grief. But this gentle, beloved psalm is actually a pretty bold theological statement. You see, in the ancient world, shepherds weren't viewed all that well. They were often stereotyped as hard men, some even criminals, men who were rugged and ruled by force. And for that reason, the shepherd metaphor was commonly applied to kings. The implication being that the kings were at the top and their subjects were just the dumb sheep who needed to do what they were told, and if they didn't, they would be made to. But the shepherd, as portrayed here, isn't that kind of shepherd. He isn't one who herds his people out of a need or desire to control or to subjugate. But rather, this is the shepherd who is genuinely concerned for the flock, who loves and cares infinitely for each and every one under his protection. A shepherd who doesn't force his flock into submission but a shepherd who lovingly walks alongside them, encouraging them, 
just keep stepping and we'll get where we're going. And that's an encouraging word, especially when we consider the world in which the good shepherd's flock lives. Psalm 23 describes the world in which they lived as a very deep, dark valley. King James, the valley of death. Doesn't exactly sound like a welcoming place, does it? More like a cold, lonely, unkind, inhospitable, and dangerous place in which to live and walk life's journey. A world that can be hard to live in. The world still is a hard place to live. Yet even when we walk through the deep valley right now, even when our human weakness makes it seem almost unbearable, when there is no sunshine and only shadows, we need not fear but rather keep stepping because we're not walking the road alone. In the John passage, we hear Jesus, who is a Jew, was no doubt extremely familiar with Psalm 23. And he straight up refers to himself as the good shepherd. Here, Jesus is invoking memory to make a point. He is the one that is promised in the Psalms and the prophets that will be there to walk with God's people in those deep, dark valleys that lie ahead. He is the one that will keep stepping right alongside them. The resurrection message is that Jesus will never let us go. That no matter what comes between us and God, Jesus will cross that divide and will walk alongside of us. That is the power of resurrection. That is the power of life and light of resurrection, the source of our hope, the hope of our being. The light in our dark world, that sometimes we will go astray like sheep. Sometimes we may mistakenly follow the voice of a stranger. Sometimes we may wander off the path and get stuck in the ditch. We may get lost, we may lose our way, we may be unsure of where we're going. So many obstacles, so many distractions, so many challenges, and yet the good shepherd will not leave us behind, but will encourage us forward. We may very well fail. We may very well make mistakes. We may choose not to live into the fullness that resurrection life promises us. But Jesus promises us not even that will get us separated from him. He will call us back. We are his. We can keep stepping no matter what has caused us to stumble and fall. This is our blessed assurance that in our struggle to be faithful, In our choices each day as we practice our faith one step at a time, Jesus is there going before us, leading us, showing us the way. And as we think about that image of Jesus as our good shepherd, leading the way, showing us the path, helping us to keep taking one step at a time, there's many implications for what that means and how we live life we all know that there's many things in life that can get us off course that can make us stumble and fall if you didn't know it before surely if you've learned anything in the midst of a global pandemic it is that you know some of the ways in which we stumble are are challenged are deeply personal It may be our life circumstances. It may be the general circumstances of a situation like COVID. It can be our own bad choices. 
can be the bad choices of others. All these types of things, they can weigh us down. They can make us feel like giving in, throwing, throwing the towel in and saying, you know what, I can't do it. There's just too much on my plate. And then aside from personal problems and challenges that we encounter, as we've already established, the world can be a tough, cold place. It can be enough to get us down just by itself. I mean, when we think about the corruption and the pettiness and the division and the partisanship and the greed and the hate and the injustice and all of that that exists in our world, it can be enough to make us go, it's hopeless. The world is, is lost. There's no fixing it. Why, why even try? Again, the good shepherd says to the sheep, just keep stepping. The mystery and challenge of living life in the resurrection happens at every level of our life from that deeply personal, individual level to the global level. But as we seek to live this kind of life, to take one step at a time, the starting line is always in our own personal lives. That means in our families, our relationships, our friendships, we have to make the choice to step into resurrection life there. It's there that God calls us to first embody the compassion and sacrifice of resurrection. And any time our words and actions bring life and joy and peace to others, we're living the resurrection life. We are taking those steps. Any time we are willing to give of ourselves for the sake of another, we are embodying resurrection life. And each of these things, when we keep stepping, we are on the right path. We are living faithfully. And as we do that, then we connect one with another. And we're able to bring life to our community, impacting others with God's grace and care and love. That means as a church community, we got to keep stepping too together. That means facing life's challenges, the challenges of our world head on together. Living out our faith in Christ. The resurrection life calls us to follow the good shepherd, to find the living water, to find hope for our lives, and to bring that hope for life to others. And you know, that's the only thing that can truly make a positive impact in our world is to step into this light and love and life that Jesus promises us. And as we seek to live that out in our own lives, as we seek to live that out together, there is great potential there to address every challenge that we face individually and collectively as a society. What it takes is to have the vision and the hope, the courage and the commitment, the faith to keep stepping, to follow the movement of God's Spirit and the life that God's Spirit brings. We may need to step from a mindset of exclusiveness into a mindset of inclusiveness. We may need to step from judgment and criticism to love and forgiveness. We may need to keep stepping from only worrying about the things that directly affect us into a lifestyle and a mindset that considers how things affect others. The life that resurrection brings cannot be contained. It cannot be controlled. It breaks out whenever and wherever we are willing to keep stepping to live for and like Jesus Christ. To do otherwise is to fall out of step with Jesus and to fall off the path. That means that every word we say, every action we take, every thought that we have 
can either be a reflection of resurrection or an obstacle getting in its way. The choice is ours. We can follow the good shepherd and keep stepping or not. Which will we choose? Amen. Please stand for our hymn of response, Trusting Jesus. my mask off and pull my hearing aids out excuse me <laughs> let us pray now dear heavenly father let us depart here today in peace love and charity with our neighbors may we be joined together in the common goal of your service to you God and to our wonderful country let us drive safely and carefully to our de destinations now, and may your blessings be with us all. We ask all these favors in your holy name, in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Redeemer. Amen. Amen.